All right. Hey, everyone. My name's Zach, and I work at a company called ClickHouse. Uh, raise your hand if you've uh, heard of ClickHouse previously. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, well, for those of you who don't know, ClickHouse is an OLAP database. Uh, we kind of uh, self-style as a real-time data warehouse. What that means is uh, you can write to it as quickly as you want, and you can read out of it just as quickly. Uh, we don't sacrifice reads for writes, writes for reads, and vice versa. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more of that in just a second. Uh, but today, our topic is uh, building kind of real-time financial analytics on top of ClickHouse. So uh, just very briefly, uh, we're going to start off by kind of explaining why exactly ClickHouse for this particular use case. Uh, then we're going to get into what we can build with it. Uh, and you know, demo gods permitting, we'll uh, show a live demo. Uh, and finally, we'll do a bit of a retro, because uh, I spent a few days building this demo last week. Uh, and now I know what I would do differently if I had to do it all over again. Uh, so we'll kind of uh, unpack a little bit of that as well. All righty, so first and foremost, why ClickHouse? Uh, primarily, it's what makes ClickHouse unique, right? Uh, the query performance is uh, really unrivaled. And you can go look uh, at our open source uh, benchmarking platform called ClickBench to see how we stack up against uh, other OLAP database solutions. Uh, and you'll see uh, right out of the box, uh, you know, kind of query performance is anywhere from like, you know, two to, in some cases, uh, you know, 100x faster the, than kind of competing solutions. Uh, really what's, uh, if we had to boil down like what our competitive edge is in one, uh, one or two sentences, it comes back to our uh, merge tree table engine. So basically when you are writing data to ClickHouse, uh, we append it at the end uh, and then kind of in the background, uh, this merge tree table engine is using a merge sort algorithm in order to kind of reshuffle and reshuffle and merge data parts together until we kind of reach the optimal storage pattern uh, for your query workload. Uh, and this kind of, al again, allows us not to sacrifice reads for writes or writes for reads. Uh, it's also super easy to use. Uh, we have a you know, largely ANSI SQL compliant interface. Uh, we expose it over HTTP. We've also got our own native TCP protocol. Uh, and then we have a whole ecosystem of integrations uh, supported out of the box. So all your favorite object storage providers, OLTP databases, uh, BI and visualization tools. Uh, we connect natively to all of those. Uh, and uh, in some ways, I think this is, uh, this is another kind of interoperability uh, plus for ClickHouse. All right, so who uses ClickHouse? The answer is uh, kind of very quietly, almost everyone. Uh, you know, anytime that there's you know, large amounts of data that need to be queried really quickly with high concurrency uh, at massive scale, uh, people seem to elect for ClickHouse over alternatives. Uh, and this is going back to uh, the inception of the open source project in 2016. Uh, you can see here, again, some of the biggest, uh, you know, biggest names in the world are already kind of using ClickHouse uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but today, we're really primarily focused on uh, you know, who uses ClickHouse for financial use cases. Uh, so obviously, we've got a couple of uh, small names on the screen right now. Uh, Bloomberg uses us uh, to do visualization for all of their, uh, you know, Bloomberg terminal like uh, asset analysis things. So, for example, when you load a stock chart in Bloomberg terminal, uh, the data that populates that chart for you is uh, powered by ClickHouse. Same with security, you know, all kinds of securities, uh, bonds, etc. Uh, all of that, uh, when when an analyst kind of clicks on a stock and zooms in on it, uh, all of that is being sourced directly from a ClickHouse table. Um, so that's kind of really customer-facing analytics and in some regard. Uh, then, you know, kind of on the other side of things, kind of for internal reporting, uh, companies like Deutsche Bank use us to do kind of real-time risk modeling. So like on their prop trading desk, you know, as uh, the traders are submitting trades, uh, they have like real-time kind of uh, uh, risk monitoring and, uh, and analysis going on. You know, they've built, you know, proprietary risk models and then they plug them into ClickHouse and basically as new trading data comes in uh, and traders make requests, uh, you know, they can kind of determine whether or not this uh, falls within their kind of risk tolerance profile or not. Uh, and they use it for a variety of other things as well because it really is kind of a, a very universal uh, uh, kind of data warehousing solution to some regard. I was actually uh, at their tech center in uh, Raleigh last week uh, and they're exploring it for uh, a number of new use cases as we speak. So, uh, you know, really what we're seeing is that uh, kind of usage of ClickHouse is exploding kind of within organizations that have already adopted it for one or two use cases. 
So again, uh, ClickHouse at Bloomberg, uh, all of these charts that you see, that's, uh, that's us. Uh, and similarly at Deutsche Bank, uh, you know, all of this kind of data they're feeding into ClickHouse and then using it to power internal tools, uh, ad hoc querying, reporting, et cetera, uh, all in real time. All right, so really the question then is, what can we build with it? Uh, I guess another headline here would be, what can any idiot such as myself actually build with it uh, kind of out of the box? Uh, and this is, really, uh, th this is really where it gets kind of cool. So uh, first and foremost, I guess, uh, you know, when uh, it came time to submit a proposal for this, uh, uh, for this talk, uh, we mentioned financial analysis with ClickHouse and, uh, and Kafka and kind of backed into this demo idea like we'll find an affordable stock market data provider, we'll pipe it all into ClickHouse, then we'll build like a, a basic UI to visualize it in real time, uh, and that'll be that. So uh, as we kind of started thinking through this, first and foremost, we needed to kind of figure out who our uh, you know, data provider was gonna be, and this is kind of roughly what we were envisioning uh, at the outset. All right, so uh, you know, after kind of backing into this initial idea, uh, then it became time to actually figure out how we were going to implement it. Uh, the reality is, you know, uh, financial market data that's like, uh, you know, anywhere near real time is expensive. Uh, and so that was kind of uh, hurdle number one, was you need to find something that we could, you know, affordably demo uh, up here, uh, you know, that still kind of demonstrated just how fast ClickHouse is. Uh, and the only one we could kind of find was Polygon.io. Uh, but, you know, similar to all the other data providers, they all have these like, you know, API credit quota limits. And, you know, you can't really keep like, uh, you know, querying all these different stock tickers uh, and, you know, dumping them into a Kafka topic and, uh, you know, continuing on uh, because, you know, you'll kind of run out of API credits very, very quickly. So, uh, funnily enough, they actually also offer this like WebSocket API that kind of, you know, pushes WebSocket notifications for each uh, and every kind of trade that they're recording on the U.S. markets uh, and quotes as well. Uh, and you can do it relatively affordably. So, uh, you know, with that in mind, then we started to kind of question, okay, well, if we're going to be subscribing to WebSocket messages anyhow, do we even really need Kafka? Can ClickHouse keep up on its own, at least for a demo? Uh, you know, basically that idempotency kind of like exactly once delivery you kind of lose with WebSockets because they're just inherently a lot more flimsy than, uh, you know, something like Kafka or a different message broker. So uh, I guess the, uh, that was kind of our initial question. And we, then we kind of went to see if, uh, if it was going to work. So uh, we set up like a really basic backend that just, you know, uh, in Node.js and it just basically uses the WebSocket uh, library that uh, ships with Node.js. Uh, and you know, basically, WebSocket dot on message, uh, take the data, pipe it straight into ClickHouse using the you know JavaScript language client for ClickHouse, uh, and just see if it would work. And the answer was yes. Even at kind of the highest throughput kind of provided by this particular market data provider, which is about a hundred thousand uh, records per second, ClickHouse was able to keep up, and uh, you know, we weren't dropping any uh, any records. So. Uh, I guess with that, we kind of validated that we didn't really even need Kafka. So sorry, uh, uh, Big Data London conference organizers. The talk title's a little bit misleading. We didn't actually end up using Kafka, uh, but we'll get back to that later. Uh, uh, by the way, also worth noting that 100,000 rows a second throughput in, uh, in ClickHouse is still like incredibly insignificant. Uh, you know, we have workloads uh, running in our cloud and kind of in self-managed environments around the world that, you know, exceed millions if not billions of uh, rows in throughput every single second. Uh, so this is still just a drop in the bucket. And obviously, if you're running something like this in production and feeding data from all over the world and, you, you know, Forex markets that run 24-7 and stuff like that, you would, uh, you know, quite naturally end up with much, much higher throughput than we'll see in this demo. All right. So... Basically, you know, after kind of uh, experimenting with this kind of new like WebSocket connector, this is kind of what we ended up with. I like to call it DTC, uh, not direct to consumer, but just direct to ClickHouse instead. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, basically just Polygon through this WebSocket client, dump it, well, rather batch it first uh, into kind of small batches so we don't, uh, you know, we're not sending a, a uh, hundred thousand new connections every single second. Uh, so instead, we kind of uh, we batch them into, uh, I guess, sets of 250 records, and then flush it, rinse and repeat. Uh, and then on the other side, we'll have a client application that basically just hits the ClickHouse table directly and queries for uh, aggregates in real time, kind of just 
polling on some interval, let's say like 100 milliseconds or 250 milliseconds and just continually hitting ClickHouse directly. All right, so just to kind of reiterate exactly how like stupid or simple uh, this uh, architecture is, this is literally the code that's running in the back end just to uh, take uh, uh, you know, take this WebSocket message data that we're receiving from the data provider and sending it into ClickHouse. It, it really just takes this much work. Uh, obviously, there's a little batching method that sits in between this, but uh, for all intents and purposes, this is all you would actually need to get started. All right, so can we see a demo? Uh, well, demo gods permitting. The network's been a little bit uh, slow here, so apologies in advance. Um, but just to start, uh, we can see here, this is kind of my little uh, backend running with uh, all of the data from uh, you know, Polygon getting inserted into ClickHouse in real time here. Um, and then you know, when it lands in ClickHouse, it's landing in two tables. I've got a, a quotes table and a trades table, because those are the two uh, uh, types of, uh, of records that I'm uh, you know, interested in for this project. And as we can see here, uh, and I've left this running for just a few days, uh, the trades table, this is all kind of trades on uh, tickers that are listed in US markets uh, for the past uh, you know, week or two. Uh, and so far, we've kind of accumulated 530 million records in the table, uh, which again, isn't you know, really that substantial for ClickHouse, uh, you know, but it just, uh, it's, I guess it's cool to see. Uh, similarly, we've got this quotes table here. And, uh, it's a little bit larger, obviously, because uh, you know, in real time, we're getting quotes for each ticker, regardless of whether there's new trades uh, that have been executed or not. Um, and you know, very, very similarly, uh, I guess we're at you know, 1.7 billion records here. The schemas are you know, relatively simple. Again, if you were use, using this in production, you'd probably have uh, many different uh, fields in addition that you might want to record. Uh, all this is possible. Uh, you know, we see customers running every day with you know, incredibly wide tables, uh, 1,000 plus columns across. Uh, and you don't uh, lose any performance because, again, it's a column in our database. So uh, to you know, query against some column in your thousand column table, you're only reading from one data file for that column. You're not reading from uh, you know, kind of a file that contains row data, you know, which would be very, very wide across uh, and make each row uh, incredibly difficult to read. Uh, so we don't run into that, any of that stuff with ClickHouse. All right, so what does this look like on the other end? Uh, I've got this demo app uh, called Stockhouse. And again, this is very simple. We just uh, put this together uh, a couple of days ago. And what you can see here is you know, for any kind of ticker that we've selected, uh, and say we wanted to add like uh, Berkshire, you know, add it in the bottom. And as soon as, uh, uh, as soon as it picks it up, it'll start feeding uh, you know, kind of real time uh, pricing data across this chart. And it's getting updated, as you can see, every you know, uh, 300 milliseconds or so. You could probably turn this up, but again, for the purpose of a demo, I thought this would uh, suffice. Um, OK, but like flashing uh, numbers on the screen isn't necessarily always uh, you know, super useful. Uh, they don't stick around too long. Um, so you know, what more can we do with it? Uh, and going back to you know, how companies like Bloomberg are using uh, ClickHouse, they're actually building visualizations on top of this data in real time. So I figured, let's see if we could do the same thing. Uh, so if we kind of select one of these stocks, and let's see one that is uh, particularly high volume. We're still in pre-market trading uh, in the States right now. Uh, but this one seems to have been uh, uh, traded in pretty high volume this morning. Uh, and as we can see here, basically we've got these uh, minute granularity candlesticks. It's a simple OHLC query, uh, you know, aggregating over kind of minute intervals uh, and spitting this data out in real time. And again, we're just hitting ClickHouse directly here uh, every you know, 300 or 400 milliseconds. And as you can see here, as, uh, as new data comes in, these candles grow. Uh, the volume bars at the bottom here also grow. Uh, and you know, as new minutes come in, we uh, you know, push new candles into the chart. So you know, really just like a very, very dumbed down version of you know, one kind of corner of Bloomberg Terminal. Uh, but I think the point remains that like, you know, getting up and running uh, with ClickHouse for financial analytics is incredibly simple. Uh, and you know, really any idiot like myself can do it. So uh, you know, encourage you guys all to give it a try. All right, so. Uh, Going back to the deck, how can we optimize? Uh, we put this together incredibly quickly, uh, you know, and cut a lot of corners, uh, you know, and as uh, the volume of data in the tables, you know, continually grown, and we've kind of, you know, 
noticed how flimsy some of like the ingestion stuff is just on like the Node.js side. Uh, I wanted to kind of put together like, okay, what would you do differently if you wanted to actually uh, productionize this? So uh, first and foremost, uh, going back to the original uh, title of the talk, you probably want a message queue uh, you know, sitting between uh, you know, whatever market data provider you've got and, and ClickHouse. ClickHouse integrates natively with RabbitMQ, Kafka, and Flink. So you know, basically anywhere you turn, uh, basically anywhere you turn, uh, you'll be able to uh, kind of use some sort of message queuing implementation. Uh, and again, also because you may be piping data from disparate data providers, uh, you know, having this kind of message queuing system might be uh, incredibly beneficial. Uh, so if we had to do it all over again, we would actually use Kafka and therefore not mislead the big data London organizers. Um, second, obviously right now we're just hitting every you know, few hundred milliseconds uh, ClickHouse directly and these tables are getting very large. Uh, and if you were actually kind of doing this at real scale, your tables and your throughput would certainly be much larger uh, than what I've just demonstrated. So you'd probably want to use something like a materialized view, which in ClickHouse is basically an insert trigger to pipe this data down into a, like a pre-aggregated table uh, such that like over time as you're you know, continually reading and reading this data, you don't have to perform these aggregations each time, uh, at query time each time. Uh, this gets expensive, obviously, and you know, there's room for optimization with things like aggregating merge tree, which is another table engine uh, that ships out of the box with ClickHouse, which basically pushes down data in this like, uh, intermediate aggregate state. Uh, and then at query time, half the work is already done, in effect, uh, so you can uh, you know, achieve much, much uh, uh, quicker query performance uh, and, and make resource utilization much more efficient. All right, and finally, even though we'd probably rip out WebSockets on the ingest side, on the uh, you know, kind of client side, we'd probably also want something like WebSocket notifications as well. Uh, this is because right now, right, I'm running this demo uh, and I've got one client application hitting ClickHouse, but imagine you have thousands or millions of concurrent users. You don't want to have thousands or millions of concurrent you know, uh, requests to ClickHouse uh, every single 100 milliseconds, let's say, you'd probably want kind of a server-side connection that you establish, uh, you know, that's kind of more generic, and then you know, uh, establish a WebSocket connection to each client and push down whatever data it is that they're actually requesting, uh, such that you don't, uh, you don't kind of run into any concurrency limits. By the way, they're pretty high with ClickHouse, but uh, not, nevertheless, you know, they still exist. Um, to make sure that uh, basically ClickHouse can uh, continue to serve these queries in a, a performant and timely manner. All right. So I think that basically covers it. Uh, any questions? <laughs>